this is the first part of the lecture of chromosomal aberrations. And chromosomal aberrations are very important, medically important topic in, in genetics because we have multiple diseases that would involve gains or loses of chromosome numbers as well as changes in the chromosomal structure that will eventually result to variation of phenotypes that can have a clinical significance. As a review, the human organism has 46 chromosomes and the chimpanzees has 48, the human mouse has 40, and corns have 20 chromosomes. And humans, we are diploid meaning we have two sets of chromosomes, one set from the mother and one set from the father. Therefore, we have 23 types or 23 kinds of chromosomes. And each of those chromosomes have two sets. This illustration shows you the karyotype of the male and the female. As you can see, both male and females have the same autosome autosomal chromosomes from 1 to 22. And the difference between male and female lies on the last set of, uh, last pair of chromosome, which will tell us if you're male and female. For females, we have two X chromosomes. For male, we have one X and one Y chromosome. And this illustration shows you the karyotype of Down syndrome. And in this, in this disease, you have a trisomy 21. When you say trisomy 21, you have an extra chromosome in the 21st chromosome. So if you would compare it from the normal karyotype of a human, you, you would see that you, have, you should have only two chromosomes for chromosome 21, okay? Because we are diploid again, we have one set, meaning one chromosome would come from the mother and one chromosome would come from the father. For Down syndrome, you have an extra chromosome in chromosome number 21. And this is a very good example of a chromosomal aberration. Differences in chromosomes are associated in the differences in the way we grow. Okay. And the karyotypes of male and females are not the same. So females have two large X chromosomes and males have a large X and a small Y chromosome as what I've shown in the previous slide. The X and Y chromosomes are again called the sex chromosomes where the rest are called autosomal chromosomes. Unusual growth can be associated with the chromosomal abnormalities or chromosomal ab aberrations. And people who develop down syndrome have trisomy 21, or you have an extra chromosome on chromosome number 21. The phenotypes of many organisms are affected by the changes in the number of chromosomes in their cell, and sometimes even changes in part or the structure of a chromosome, which can confer any significance in terms of biologic function. So the first type of chromosomal aberration would involve the numerical aberration, meaning you have changes in terms of the number of chromosomes. Remember, you should have only 46 chromosomes, no more, no less. And these numerical changes are usually described as variation in the ploidy of an organism. And when you say ploidy, it means fold, as in two fold. Again, human beings or, the, or human organisms should be diploid except for the sex cells, which are the sperm and egg cells, which are haploid. Okay. And when we say ploidy, it refers to the number of set of chromosomes in a cell or an organism. And we have several types of ploidy. Euploidy is the normal set of chromosomes, aneuploidy and polyploidy. Us humans, normal humans existing normally are euploid. These are organisms with complete or normal sets of chromosome. And when we say polyploid, these are organisms that carry extra sets 
of chromosomes. The level of polyploidy is described by referring to a basic chromosome number, which is usually denoted as small letter n. Okay, so that's just a review again. Um, when you say 2n, it refers to diploid, and this would mean that you have this would mean that you have two sets of chromosomes, and you have triploid, 3n, you have three sets, and tetraploids, so you have 4n. So this is a, a very good illustration of the ploidy. So haploid, you see here you have three types of chromosome. Chromosome A, B, C, or chromosome 1, 2, 3. As you can see here for haploid, you have only one set of chromosome. For diploid, you have two sets. This chromosome and this chromosome. So chromosome A has two sets of chromosome. For chromosome B, you have two sets. For chromosome 3, you have three sets. For triploid, you have three sets. For tetraploid, you have four sets. Triploidy would have three sets of chromosomes, meaning for a certain number of, uh, for the, for uh, a certain karyotype, all of the chromosomes have an extra additional pro, uh, chromosome in that of a diploid. Tetraploid have four sets of chromosomes. So in humans, a triploidy, uh, a triploidy aberration. If all chromosomes, all types of chromosomes are triploid, therefore you have sixty nine chromosomes total. For a tet tetraploidy, you have ninety two chromosomes in total. Aneuploid is defined as an organism in which a particular chromosome or chromosome, chromosome segment is under or overrepresented. Over and these organisms would suffer a specific genetic imbalance. And we have different types of aneuploidy. We have monosomy and trisomy. Monosomy is one less chromosome. You have, uh, you have for example, in humans, we have 46 chromosomes, right? A removal of one chromosome would confer monosomy, meaning you have one less chromosome. You have subtracted one chromosome from the total number of chromosomes. Trisomy is one additional chromosome. Again, trisomy is different from triploidy. When you see triploidy, all chromosomes would have an extra set of chromosomes. For trisomy, you have a one additional chromosome to a specific chromosome number. Well, let us review with the basic process of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So meiosis 1 would consist of prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, and cytokinesis. Well, meiosis 2 would have also the same process, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 3. To telophase two. Now, what happens during the first part? Yeah, uh, these are the chromosomes, right? So you know, before it enters the process of meiosis, of course, the DNA should be copied during the interface, specifically the S phase. Now, once the DNA is copied, chromosomes would pair up during prophase one, and in in prophase one, recombination occur, crossing over occurs. And then, uh, uh, no, not yet. Um, yes, yes. Recombination occurs during prophase one in which the chromosomes would pair up and this would result to metaphase one. And in metaphase one, um, the chromosomes would, would line up at the equator to form um, a meiotic spindle. And in anaphase one, the chromosomes would be pulled apart. Okay. And then the cells would pinch in the middle to, to result into two daughter cells. And this will now enter prophase two. And in prophase two, the same process, just like in mitosis, the chromosomes would light up in the equator. And then the sister chromatids would pull apart during anaphase two. And then the cell will pinch in the middle 
during cytokinesis and build and this and that's what resulted to four granddaughter cells in the whole process of meiosis okay so again you have um, you have recombination that would occur during prophase one okay and then two daughter cells would would eventually occur or that would that would eventually be produced and these daughter cells would undergo meiosis 2. Now, meiosis 2 is just like mitosis, and it will result into to four daughter cells or four granddaughter cells from an original cell in prophase in meiosis 1. Now, this illustration shows you the mechanism of aneuploidy. And aneuploidy can occur at the level of first meiosis and second meiosis. And we have the terms here, non-disjunction. And when you say non-disjunction, this refers to the, the abnormal separation or the failure of the separation of the chromosomes that will result into abnormal chromosome number. Now, if non-disjunction would occur during the first phase or during the first meiotic division, this will result into an extra chromosome in one cell, while the other one would have an empty chromosome, or or would have a, or would have a lesser chromosome from that original. So, when this extra chromosome would result in would undergo process of me meiosis two, it will result into the formation of two extra chromosomes in the gamete. So you have sperm cells containing, for example, in chromosome number one, you have two chromosome number one. Now in sperm cells or egg cells, you should have only one chromosome number one because if, if fertilization would occur, the gamete should contribute one set of chromosome from the mother from and one from the father. And now it will result into an organism who are trisomic. Okay, trisomic individual if this gamete would undergo fertilization. Now if the gamete having no chromosomes would undergo fertilization, it will result into a monosomic type of aneuploidy because you have a nullisomic gamete. Now, if the non-disjunction would occur at the second meiotic phase, during the first meiosis, normal disjunction would occur, meaning normal separation of chromosomes would occur. But, what the, but, but the problem here is that the chromosomes fail to separate during meiosis two, meaning you have the extra chromosome of one cell while the other one has no chromosome. So this will result now in two, four possibilities. You have the formation of a normal cell or a normal gamete and formation of a gamete that has an extra chromosome and a nullisomic gamete. Now, the, chromosome, the gamete having an extra chromosome, if it undergoes fertilization, you have the formation of a trisomic individual while the nullisomic gamete would undergo fertilization the phenotype uh, the genotype of that individual would be monosomic again to better illustrate if there's non disjunction of of meiosis 1 for example here normally the chromosomes should 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 separate now what happens is that you have an you have an extra chromosome in one cell while the other one has no chromosome and this cell would, develop, would, develop, would eventually result into development of the nullisomic gametes. While for the cell having an extra chromosome, if it undergoes meiosis 2, it will develop a disomic gametes, meaning it has an extra chromosome. Now, for non disjunction during meiosis 2, now again, during the process of meiosis, Normal separation of chromosomes will occur at meiosis 1, but the problem here is that you have a problem in meiosis 2. So you have non-disjunction, meaning failure of separation of chromosome at meiosis 2. So you have now the formation of a diisomic gamete and a nullisomic gamete. While the other cell, 
would form a monosomic or um, sub monosomic or your normal gametes. So remember your gametes are monosomic, should have only one set of chromosome. While in well in our cells, in our somatic cells, we have a diploid set up of our chromosomes. Oh, aneuploidy is, it refers to a numerical change in the part of a chromosome, usually just a single chromosome. It would imply a genetic balance. And polyploidy refers to a numerical change in the whole set of chromosomes. And this would confer no genetic imbalance. Now, this um, tabulation will show you the classification of the numerical chromosomal aberration. You have chromosomal variation in terms of polyploidy and aneuploidy. And we have syndromes resulting from aneuploidy. You have Batao syndrome, which is trisomy 13, meaning you have an extra chromosome in chromosome number 13. Edward syndrome is trisomy 18. So an, an easier way for you to remember is E for 18. So E for 18, so you have an extra chromosome number 18. Down syndrome is trisomy 21, while Turner syndrome is monosomy 23. When you say monosomy 23, you have only one X chromosome. Kleinfelter syndrome is the XXY syndrome, meaning you have an extra X chromosome in males. Jacob syndrome is XYY chromosome, and this is an extra Y chromosome. <laughs> Next is structural aberrations. Structural aberrations can occur due to a loss or gain of a genetic material or a rearrangement in the location of the genetic material. And this illustration shows you chromosomal structure abnormalities, such as translocation, deletion, inversion, isochromosome, derivative chromosomes, insertion, and ring chromosomes. Deletion refers to a loss of a portion of chromosome. An example of a deletion is the Cridouchat syndrome. You have a deletion of chromosome number um, five. You have a portion in chromosome number five. So P stands for the petit portion or the short arm portion of the chromosome. And it is during it is in this part of the chromosome where you, you have deletions. Duplication is an X is, is that you have an extra piece of chromosome. Example of that is the charcot marie syndrome or charcot marie disease, which occurs in chromosome number 17. Oh, for deletion, again, it only refers to a specific portion of chromosome, not the entire chromosome because if if, if it's an if if we have a loss of an entire chromosome that is aneuploidy, but in structural aberrations you have only a portion of the chromosome that is affected. For duplication, for example, in the Kriduschat syndrome or Kriduschat disease in chromosome number seventeen, you have a duplicated area of a certain chromosome that will result into that structural abnormalities. Insertions are the portions of one chromosome that has been deleted from its normal place and it is inserted into another chromosome. So for example, if this segment of chromosome is located in chromosome number one, this portion is transferred from chromosome number one to chromosome number two, and that is insertion. Inversion is the fragmentation of a chromosome followed by a reconstitution with an a section inverted. So example of inversions are hemophilia A. So inversions, for example, if you have um, Y chromosome, the chromosome, uh, the portion of this chromosome is, should be located in the petite region. That portion of the chromosome is inverted to the Q portion or the long arm portion of the chromosome. So that is inversion. So you have two types of inversion. We have the paracentric, uh, paracentric inversion and pericentric inversion. We say paracentric inversion, it doesn't cross the centromere, while pericentric is, is uh, it crosses the 
center or the center mirror. Okay, so again, pericentric, pericentric um, inversion. Just the, the inversion would involve the centromere, while in paracentric, there's no involvement of the centromere. Isochromosomes are mirror image of abnormal chromosomes consisting of two copies of either a short arm or a long arm. It is often observed for X and acrocentric chromosomes, such as thir uh, chromosomes 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22. The example of isochromosomes are the variant Turner syndrome, which is the 46X isochromosome XQ. So here, uh, in this illustration or in this example, the Q portion is the one that is mirror image. So this is the normal X chromosome and this is the Q portion or the Q arm of the chromosome. And in isochromosome, this Q portion is copied to its short arm. So you have the formation of this iso. That's why it's called isochromosome because you have one portion of the chromosome, chromosome that is copied from one another. Okay. So again, another example of, iso of isochromosome is the pallister killian syndrome. And this is isochromosome 12P. So the petite portion is the one that is copied. Okay, so this is the normal chromosome number 12, and this is chromosome isochromosome 12. So it's the short portion or the short arm of the chromosome that is copied to the other side of the centromere. And now you have this mirror image of the 12P. Okay. The ring chromosomes arise following breakage and rejoining in both chromosome arms. So this is their mechanism. You have breaks in chromosomes, specifically in the telomere ends. The, 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 then you have the, now the deleted genetic material, and the ends of the breaks of the chromosome would now form, would now form a ring-like spring -like structure of the chromosomes. Okay. Example of that is in this karyotype. This is a ring chromosome. Example of a disease having a ring chromosome is the ring chromosome 14 which is a condition characterized by seizures and intellectual disability. Translocation is the transfer of a chromosome or a segment of it to a non-homologous chromosome. Now, what makes it different from insertion? That it, it, in insertion, uh, the, the portion of the chromosome, for example, in chromosome number four, in insertion, uh, that portion is removed from chromosome number four and it is transferred to chromosome number 20 without exchange of this portion of the chromosome to chromosome number four okay well in translocation you have um, a switching of chromosome example in chromosome number four and chromosome number 20 you have a switching of the segment of chromosome from chromosome number 20 to chromosome number four and vice versa so that's what makes it different. So in reciprocal translocation, you have two different chromosomes that have exchanged with each other. So um, as a very good example of that is the reciprocal translocation of chromosome number four and chromosome number 20. When this exchange involves no gain or no loss of chromosomal material, the translocation is called balance and has no phenotypic effect. Another type of uh, translocation is the Robertsonian, Robertsonian translocation, which is a type of chromosomal rearrangement that is formed by fusion of the whole long arms of two acrocentric chromosomes. Okay. This is an example of a balanced translocation. You have chromosomal breaks, and you have an exchange of segments of two non-homologous chromosomes, and, and that's a formation of a balanced translocation. For Robertsonian translocation, the chromosomal breaks would occur at different levels in the, in, in the chromosomes 
one is in the P arm, one is in the long arm, or one is the short one, one break is in the short arm, one break is in the long arm. And the breaks will now form this uh, very long chromosomes. Okay. Uh, very long chromosome. And the other chromosome is a smaller portion of that chromosome. So Down syndrome is a good example of chromosomal aberration. And the most common cause of down syndrome is the is the non disjunction it is due to the failure of the disjunction of the two chromosomes of the pair number 21 during division and the extra 21 chromosome is separate so that the total number to, total number of chromosomes in the cell is 47 and the incidence of down syndrome is higher in increasing maternal age so it is age dependent. So you have a greater risk of developing Down syndrome if you were conceived, if your mother conceived you by the age of 40 years old and above. Yeah. Now in, in the process of non-disjunction again, non-disjunction can occur in meiosis one and meiosis two. So here, uh, trisomy 21 can occur either non-disjunction of meiosis 1 because it can form trisomy or non-disjunction during meiosis 2 because, can, because one product of non-disjunction of meiosis 2 can also be trisomy. The second um, cause of Down syndrome is translocation which would comprise around 4% of cases. You have an extra 21 chromosome that is translocated to another chromosome so that you have a total number of chromosomes of 46, but the genetic material is that of 47 chromosomes. The incidence usually, uh, is, usually occur in young mothers and the risk of recurrence is high. And the mother is called a translocation carrier. Okay. So this is a good example of illustration of illustrating the translocation with Down syndrome. Now the extra 21 chromosome is translocated to chromosome number 14. So it would appear as um, normal number of chromosome. But again, the chromosome number 14 would bear an extra chromosome into its structure. So that would still confer manifestation of Down syndrome. The last is mosaicism, which is 1% of cases. Um, in mosaicism, you have some cells that have normal sets of chromosomes, 46 chromosomes, and other cells are trisomic, trisomic or would have a 47 chromosomes. Okay. And the manifestation of the disease would depend on the level of mosaicism. If you have more number of cells having an abnormal karyotype, then you have more severe manifestation of the disease. So that ends the first part of the chromosomal aberration. Thank you for listening.